Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It's simplistic yet fun, but faces one major issue. The game is too darn easy and proves barely a challenge. I scoured the internet for unique challenge runs I could do to make the game harder, and eventually came across a Reddit post by user 128GB. They had managed to hack the game to lower Mario's HP to zero. Surprisingly, the game tolerated this quite well and even stopped spawning Mario into fights. I had decided this was the one. I had to do this one. And so I did. Can you beat Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga without Mario? Hi, hey, future me here. When I was making this video, I had to use Cheat Engine and set Mario's stats to zero myself, and the process was super tedious, and I'd have to redo it every time I launched the emulator. But 128GB just created their own cheat code for Visual Boy Advance that does it automatically. I'll leave those codes in the description below for anyone who wants to try this challenge. Alright, back to the present. Unfortunately, the game begins with a forced tutorial fight with Bowser where we don't have much access to Luigi, meaning we must use Mario. Thankfully for us, this battle has little impact on the game itself. We then board the Koopa Cruiser and are quote-unquote taught how to fight as a pair, despite Mario being erased from existence, which is quite funny. Luigi can solo Fawful and move on to Stardust Fields. After being stopped by Tollstar, we must collect 100 Beam Bean coins to progress. This itself is not that bad, and we learn both the spin jump and high jump without any issue. However, we are then taught to use our quote unquote first bros attack, Splash Bros by the Starshade Brothers. The game will crash if this tutorial started without Mario, so we must temporarily bring him back. Tollstar was easily defeated without taking any damage, however without the utility of a second character or any bros attacks, he took a whopping 4 minutes to beat, something that would never happen to me in a casual playthrough. Nevertheless, we pushed on the Hoo-Hoo Mountain. Climbing the mountain proved to be little trouble. These enemies were easy enough to defeat with only Luigi's jumps and counterattacks. This is also the point of the game where I set both bros BP to zero to declutter the in-battle stat menu. Hoo-Hoo-Rose was our next boss, and I was a little worried about this one. To defeat Hoo-Hoo-Rose, you must destroy the pillar he isn't hiding under, so he'll become vulnerable after switching spots. Normally, you'd be able to destroy a pillar and do some damage at the same time, but we didn't have that luxury. Thankfully, his AI was dumb enough to sit there for a turn or two so it could snag an easy win. At the mountain summit, we fought Dragahoho, who wasn't hard nor changed by the challenge at all, I'm just... bad. But he went down anyway, giving us access to hammers. Before leaving, the Hammer Bros attempted to teach us with how to use hammers in battle. This tutorial once again crashes the game without Mario, so we must unfortunately bring him back from the dead a second time. When we find the town in a state of despair, we go inside the castle where Lady Lima tells us to fix the castle's plumbing. We easily fix it before finding out Lady Lima was a fake and gave Cackler to the Beanstar by accident. We then must fight Queen Bean, and oh my god. This was by far the longest boss fight of the run. Damage Queen Bean, you must destroy both of our arms. I was only doing about 7 damage per turn, meaning this boss would take forever. By the way, did you know Queen Bean has a melee attack? Yeah, I had never seen that before, and she would not stop spamming it throughout this fight. It's like a cruel 17 minutes, but we were able to defeat Queen Bean and move on. Chucklehook Wood started off with a pretty typical boss fight against Popple and Rookie. Nothing I did was too bad, but oh, we have not at all seen the torture Popple is capable of yet. I was a little worried about Wiggler, seeing how many segments he has, but it turns out he doesn't have that much HP, so he went down easily as well. Next up was the Chuckalator, which I was worried about. When his HP is low, Chuckalator shrinks and Bubbles will tell him jokes to regenerate his HP. With Fancy Smanchy Bros attacks, we'd be able to outnumber him and snag the win, but I obviously couldn't do that. Thankfully, I was able to do a little more damage than he could heal every turn, and he eventually stopped and started fighting again, letting us win. After returning Queen Bean to normal, we find Cacletta has been hiding out at Woohoo University and travel there to stop her. The dungeon itself is mostly unchanged, except that I had to watch out once Luigi was taken by a crane. 
Mario has not been spawning in, meaning if Luigi can't spawn into a fight, softlock. Getting into any encounter with just Mario will cause the game to crash. Thankfully, I was able to avoid everything and make it to Cacletta. Cacletta took a while, but Luigi was able to take her down and make it to the basement to fight Papa and Rookie again. Papa held off on his true power for now, but teamed up with Rookie to do their own bros attacks, claiming we're not the only ones who could do that, even though we haven't used a single one. Nevertheless, they went down. We got the Thunderhand and Firebrand, then moved on to an easy fight with Mom Piranha at the airstrip. After escorting Princess Peach to the desert, we took down Trunkle with ease, managing to make it to Little Fungi Town. There, we bought Luigi the Mush Badge, an incredible piece of gear that would raise attack the more mushrooms we had. By this point, I was swimming in coins since I was able to sell any syrup slash one-ups I got and wasn't buying Mario any gear. I was able to enjoy the game, giving me a break through Gavaho Ruins, as you normally can't use Mario there anyway. When we come back, we find that now Bowletta has taken Peach and rushed to find the Beanstar to meet their demands. We progressed to the ocean to Guarhar Lagoon as we normally would, learning our final overworld techniques. The area remained unchanged until we got to Hermie the Third. It was here that I truly noticed that bosses normally weren't doing what they should. Hermie wouldn't stop using his claw attack on Mario's spot even though he wasn't there. I was able to get through him using his heal move and eventually got through to the first Beanstar piece. Arhal and Yoshi's leader were both easy beanstar pieces that acquired little to no fighting, aside from Piranha Bean, which was fine because it's a solo Luigi fight anyway. Piranha Bean was actually the reason I chose Luigi for this run over Mario. It would have been impossible to beat him without Luigi. The beanstar piece in Winkle's Coliseum was a different story. To get out, we must fight Pavel alone, and this is where he starts to use his hammer steel move. If you counter it, there's no problem. The fight is easily doable. However, if this move hits you even once, he'll attempt to steal Mario's hammer the next turn, and... softlock. If Popple takes your hammer, you'll have to restart the fight. After a while, I was able to take down Popple though and move on. This is it, the second to last area of the game. Joke's End proved to be pretty challenging, the clumps were the toughest enemy I had fought yet, but I was able to overpower them. Joke's End has a massive segment where Mario and Luigi split up. I was able to juke everything out on Mario's side and finish without any game crashes. To George's friend was an easy fight, all she did was spam the snowball move over and over again which never hit me. We chased Luigi after he parachutes from the Koopa Cruiser and have our final fight with Papa as well as Birdo. He's still rocking the hammer steel attack which has succumbed to once because I'm bad. But a second try is all we need to finish him off for good. We buy the Mush Badge AA for the last area to maximize our damage. This is the final and hardest area of the game, Bowser's Castle. Here we have to fight all seven Kooplings before being able to go up against the final bosses. Iggy, Morin, Lemmy, and Ludwig all go down easily with no issues. At Roy, a new issue is brought to light, the time bob -um. After a certain amount of turns, we'll get an instant game over if the Koopling hasn't fallen yet. Here, I equip the Great Force, which doubles the attack I deal and take, making the time bob -um less trivial. Roy? Wendy? And Larry? 
all fall, and it's time for our two final battles. First up is Fawful, who hides in his robot until fire is used, but will become a sitting duck. Without Mario, we don't have access to fire, but Fawful will come out anyway after his light orb attack. This battle takes a while, but we're able to finish him off and move on to Bowletta. Balletta herself is no issue, just like a normal playthrough. She's done within a few turns. But here comes the real final battle, Cacletta's soul. For whatever reason, Mario's sprite spawns down at the stat bar, but he has nothing, so it's completely fine. Cacletta uses a variety of attacks, none of which are that bad due to her defense being so high. We have to take down her arms and head to damage her heart. A feat, thankfully, not as hard as to fight against Queen Bean. With one bro, it takes a while, but we're able to defeat Cacletta's soul. Upon trying to spit us out, Badletta attempts to throw up Mario, who, because he doesn't exist, crashes the game. And well, that's it. There's nothing we can do about that. The challenge is now over. It was an anticlimactic ending, but I'll count that. We took down Cacletta's soul, and that's what matters to me. So that answers the question. Can you beat Mario and Luigi Super Stars like without Mario? Uh, yes? The ending is inviolable, but there's nothing we missed out on that requires Mario anyway, so I'll count this as a win. This challenge was super fun, but it unfortunately wasn't the challenge I was looking for. Whether that be because I abused a mush badge or great force, I was able to easily come out on top. This is my first actual video I've made on the channel, so I'd greatly appreciate if you subscribe. I don't plan on having a schedule for videos, just whenever I have something to make, so it'd mean a lot to me if you turn on notifications so you don't miss anything from me. Thanks for watching!